You asked about the test of significance uh, explained on page 491 of your book. Um, some of you may not understand everything that's on this page fully, uh, mainly because we've skipped uh, a crucial chapter uh, which um, has to do with tests of hypotheses and inferential statistics. Um, but I will try in this uh, short video to sort of acclimate you or introduce you to the whole notion of statistical significance. When you're doing statistical significance or inferential statistics, you s take a sample, you examine it, you come up with a statistic that you calculate from it, and then you compare that to uh, some table, statistical table value, and based on the comparison, you will make a conclusion about um, the, the inference that you're making. Now the inference that you're making will have to be first stated in the form of hypotheses. In this example, the null hypothesis, uh, which is always the status quo, is beta 1 is 0, meaning that the slope is 0 and there is no linear relationship between x and y. The other alternative uh, is called alternative hypothesis and it will always be the opposite of H naught. So in this case we'll say beta 1 or slope for the line is not 0 and if it's not 0 then that means that it's either positive meaning higher than 0 or it's lower than 0 and therefore it's negative. When you state your hypotheses before you do anything else in this for the sake of and for in, in the interest of impartiality, uh, you must state your significance level for your analysis, meaning what is the probability um, that you, that you want to set for yourself to reject H0. You always test H0 and so you will set the probability of rejecting a true H naught. So you want your analysis to be uh, done in such a level so that this probability of rejecting H naught when it is a true H naught, when it is a true hypothesis, um, to, uh, to whatever the, the, the amount you want to um, use to set. So um, if this um, uh, probability that you set is a low probability, then that means that you have a very low probability of rejecting the null when in fact it's a true null. Now in this example, um, and, and let me say that you do this always before you even um, collect your sample or compute anything from the sample so that you don't want the sample results to tell you what to conclude. You want to set all of this before you actually conduct your test. So that's again the scientific method. Now um, in this example we have um, uh, this prob and, and let me say that this probability of rejecting a true null is called the alpha probability and it's also called a significance level of the test. Generally we want that to be less than 0.05. The authors in this case have selected not 0.05 but they have selected alpha to be 0.01. If you read that page uh, somewhere in there they're telling you that uh, alpha has been selected to be 0.01. So that means if I were to draw, show you graphically if this is the area of accepting a true H naught, and if I want this to be 99%, then the probability of rejecting a true null, rejecting a true null, must be 1% combined in these two tails, because I have 99% here, and so this alpha probability of 0.01 which the authors have selected, half of it should go here and half of it should be here. So that's where we get the 0.005 or alpha divided by 2 as demonstrated in your book. So 
we know our alpha is um, our alpha divided by two is 0 0.005, and in this example, our sample size n is 10. So n minus 2, which is our degrees of freedom, equals to be 8. So um, in our table, you will see, in our t table at the end of the book, you will see that if you look, at, you look up degrees of freedom and you go down and you go to 8, and you go across the 0 0.005, which is the last column entry for this table, uh, meaning this table doesn't show anything less than alpha 0.01. And so 0 0.005 is our upper tail, and so the alpha significance level uh, studied um, for a two-tailed test, when we have two tails in our analysis, the highest that this table will be able to help us with is 0 0.01 significance level. Okay, so for um, this table, or for this um, test, we can see 3.355 is the listed number in our table. So I'm going to erase these so I can write under them. Um, so our critical t values that we looked up from the table are 3.355 and negative 3.355. And um, the t distribution is um, um, symmetrical, just like the z distribution. And so we have the positive and the negative entries that I just spoke of. All right. So the way that we do this uh, the statistical significance is like this. Number one, you calculate, you s set the parameters for your test, which means select your alpha level, and then you look up your table value, which we also call critical value, which is what we did right now. Then step two is compute your calculated sample statistic, which we also call the observed t-value, observed from the sample. Now I'm not going to go through that analysis, but your book shows you what the calculated t-value is. In this example, in the middle of page 491, we see the observed t-value is 8.62. So, um, that means that our 8.62 falls way out here relative to our critical t value. So this, of course, remember we said this is the rejection of a true null. If we reject the, true, the null, which is true, um, then that means that we can accept the, um, um, the alternative and so the probability of accepting um, an alternative hypothesis which um, is not supported is only um, 0.01 or less. And so um, as a result, essentially we're saying we can reject the null and accept the alternative. And if we're accepting the alternative, then we're saying that the test is significant and um, Therefore, um, we can have confidence in our results. And because our 8.62, our observed value, is higher than uh, the this t value that we looked up from the table, then um, we can conclude that the, um, uh, that the slope is, in fact, a positive value. Now, um, this 3.355 is, in fact, related to our associated with alpha of 0 0.01, which is um, what the com sum summation of these two tails are. So if our calculated t value was in fact 3.355, then we would say the test is significant at the 0 0.01 level. But in this case, our calculated value happens to be much higher than um, the, obs uh, than the table value. So we are way in the rejection region of the alternative hypothesis, of, of the null hypothesis. And as a result, if we were to have a table that goes for further on out uh, and reports smaller and smaller numbers, 
uh, probabilities, then we might be able to see the 8.62 here. But as in the most as in the case of most of the statistical tables, they only shut them off at a certain point. Um, and so um, that doesn't mean that this 8.62 does not have a significance level associated with it. It's just that in a table we cannot find it. But this 8.62 uh, observed t-value, in fact, if you were to use mm, some statistical software like Excel or Minitab, um, the software will compute the associated probability value, alpha probability value associated with this observed t-value. And your book is saying that that p-value associated with this 8.62 happens to be 0 0.000. So the software is also only showing it to three um, uh, decimal places and therefore um, the conclusion is that not only is the um, uh, test this test significant at the 0.01 level, but in fact it is significant at the 0 0.000 level. Uh, so this test is highly significant, meaning that um, the probability that you w you might reject the null is very very low, and as a result you can have confidence that um, alternative hypothesis can be trusted, and therefore the sig the relationship between x and y is in fact a positive relationship in this um, example. I hope that helps you. Uh, thank you. This has been Dr. J.